Welcome to The Doctrinal Component with Tom Nettles, brought to you by Founders Ministries. Founders Ministries is a reformed teaching organization committed to the recovery of the gospel and the reformation of local churches. For more teaching material by Dr. Nettles, please visit founders.org. Hello. Welcome again to The Doctrinal Component. Uh, this is Tom Nettles, and today we're going to look uh, at Titus chapter 1, uh, the first couple of verses, in fact, four verses, one through four. And we're going to see how compactly Paul dealt with doctrinal issues, how he had particular doctrines that were very expansive and comprehensive in mind when he would use very short phrases, and how these phrases can be taken and uh, dealt with and unpacked with a large number of scriptures that show us the doctrinal foundation upon which Paul built his own ministry and how he expected those uh, that he had commissioned to go to various churches uh, to build their ministry. So we're going to look at uh, Titus. Uh, Titus was one who had accompanied Paul in some of his missionary uh, activities, and Paul had sent him to Crete uh, in order to uh, give to give order to the things that uh, needed to be done. He wanted to make sure that they had the right kind of elders, that uh, they understood that the grace of God is not something that would give them licentiousness, the liberty of licentiousness, but the liberty of holiness. And so he gives Titus some very compact instructions as he sends him into this particular task. The verses we're going to be considering in the next two or three issues of the doctrinal component are verses 1 through 3, 1 through 4. Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, for the sake of the faith of God's elect and their knowledge of the truth, which accords with godliness, in hope of eternal life, which God, who never lies, promised before the ages began, and at the proper time manifested in his word through the preaching with which I have been entrusted by the command of God our Savior, to Titus, my true child, in a common faith. Grace and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Savior. Now, at the very beginning, Paul <coughs> establishes his authority by claiming apostleship. Now, this will be an aid to Titus. Titus probably did not need to be convinced of Paul's apostleship. He had been with him. He had heard him preach. He knew very well, probably, the testimony of Paul as to how he was converted and how he was called to be an apostle. He knew that he had had to defend his apostleship in several situations, uh, particularly against those uh, heretics, uh, those Judaizers who had gone to the churches in Galatia. Uh, but this claim that Paul gives uh, would uh, aid Titus in the work that he had been assigned to do there in Crete. This letter arms him with apostolic blessing in the eyes of the church. It says that this one who is an apostle is one who has sent him there to set in order those things that remain to be done. It gives evidence that he has been instructed uh, to do precisely what Paul had told him to do. So the detail of the apostolic responsibility gives a startlingly clear picture of divine purpose in the task of Titus. Notice that Paul calls himself a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ. Uh, the first is the more general category. Everyone who has come to faith in Christ could legitimately call themselves a servant of God. Uh, we are meant to serve him. We're meant to worship him. We're meant to do his bidding. We find our chief joy 
uh, in being his servants. Uh, Jesus himself gave this example to us. He says, The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and give his life a ransom for many. And he did this in the context of instructing his disciples that those who were the servant of all would be the ones uh, who would be the most uh, clear in their following the commands of Christ and the example of Christ. It will be our eternal joy to be his servants even in heaven, to praise him and recognize his worthiness and that we are to do his bidding <clears throat> at all times. But Paul is also an apostle of Jesus Christ. In a specific way, his servant a relationship is worked out in this specific calling. He is the one that is sent with a message. This clearly establishes the manner in which his servanthood is carried out. He is to be one of those who receives special revelation. He is to be one of those who goes into unreached areas and preaches uh, the gospel and established churches and then teaches these churches on the basis of the clear revelation that God gives him uh, without any haughtiness or arrogance. As an apostle, he can claim that his message is one that is revealed of God, that it constitutes the very faith, uh, the very content of truth that all of God's servants are to believe. So he introduces himself as a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ. In our next session, we will look at some of the other phrases that the Apostle Paul uses and seek to deal with the theological importance of these phrases. Uh, thank you very much. I look forward to our next session together. <music>